Hey, it's that time of day again. It's time for On Top and Hot. This is Tuesday, October 11th, and I'm John Zadar. Now, each day right around this time, we like to look at hot OTC and penny stocks. We're looking for stocks that got heat, and I'm looking at all sorts of places. I'm checking out the charts, regardless if there's any filings or news or catalysts. If the charts look like they're ready to break out, I'm going to share that with you. Or there could be a lot of buzz online about a stock. But again, you can't find any catalysts, no news press, no filings, but there's chatter, chatter, chatter. Don't ignore that situation. Or it could just be as simple as the news. The news has a ton of catalysts and there's a lot of them there, folks. I've looked at this news personally, each and every one of them over the last five days. You got your oldest news at the top, newest news down here at the bottom. And that is the good news. No public offerings, no financial reports. It's mergers, acquisitions, joint ventures, stuff like that. Now that's all OTC news, but we do look at penny stocks, which is not necessarily the same thing. A penny stock is any stock under $5, regardless of what market it's sold on. So no doubt we are gonna be looking at stocks on the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange as well. Now, most of the stocks I do look at are OTC stocks, and this is where I do all of my research. No doubt about it, it is my number one stop. If I can't find what I'm looking for, then I'll go out searching. But this site is updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC with all of that pertinent, important information we're constantly looking for. So there's no need to be going out to Google looking for it when they post it every single day right here. Save yourself the hassle and time. You'll get a lot more work done, I promise. So how did we finish today on the OTC market? Well, let's go ahead and refresh this. These numbers don't automatically refresh. Hey, we got a little bit of a bump, thank God. It's not a better day than yesterday. Uh, we did have like 1.6, 1.7 billion in dollar volume yesterday. So that is up today. Anytime money starts pouring into the market, it's a good thing, but that's not pouring. That's a dribble right now. Our share volume, oh man, did we take a drop. We were over 12 billion, wasn't it yesterday? Over 12 billion, and now we're back under 10 billion at 8.4. Not a good move at all. Our trades has jumped up. I think we were at 244,000 trades yesterday. Today we're at 290, which is no big deal. We're just hovering between 250 and 300,000 and we're really not getting anywhere. The fact that our share volume fell by 30% roughly is a bit scary. Now, regardless of what the market does, there's always stocks out there bouncing. And there's stocks that are coming out with news so that we can set up for plays. And I've got a few of those to share with you today. Come on show you what I got. First company we're taking a look at is Meta Materials Inc, ticker MMAT. Now the company hasn't had any fresh news or filings come out. Matter of fact, the last piece of news that came out was at the end of last month and it really was good news. But since then, nothing. But the stock was moving today. She finished today at almost 79 cents with just a little over 5% gains. And this company is on the NASDAQ. But the truth of the matter is, we're not looking at this stock for this company. The company has another ticker for another stock. This is MMTLP Metamaterials Inc., but this is their Class A preferred stock. You can see it had a much bigger jump today. Now, what's the difference between preferred stock and common stock? Well, there's primarily two differences. The main difference between preferred and common stock is that preferred stock gets no voting rights to shareholders, while common stock does. The other difference, preferred shareholders have priority over a company's income, meaning they are paid dividends before common shareholders are. Now, MMTLP had a good day. She finished at $4.40 with 26.8% gains. And strangely enough, this is not on the NASDAQ. It is on the OTC market, the pink tier. Now, I don't see any of the verified profile or verified transfer agent, but then maybe preferred stock doesn't get it. I'm really not up on that. Now, their business description here tells us that Torchlight Energy, headquartered in Houston, Texas, is positioned as a junior oil and gas player with a primary spotlight on oil. <clears throat> Not even close. I don't know why they don't update this. This is what the company does. 
Meta delivers previously unachievable performance across the range of applications by inventing, designing, developing highly functional materials and intelligent surfaces. Our extensive technology platform is software and AI design driven. Meta materials are a new class of functional materials designed around unique patterns or structures which cause them to interact with light and other forms of energy in ways not found in nature. Meta materials enable properties and capabilities that go beyond those found in natural materials. And just to give you an idea of what they're working with, we've jumped on over here to their website. They've got a list of products here, very innovative products. Matter of fact, let me read this here. Meta is a developer of high performance functional materials and nano composites. Meta materials has the ability to manipulate light, heat, and other forms of electromagnetic waves in ways not found in nature. We design and fabricate materials with new functionalities, delivering breakthrough performance for applications across a range of industries. Now, they've got a list of products here. They're very innovative. I don't understand how they use them all. This is the NanoWeb Revolutionary Transparent Conductive Film. Don't know a whole lot about this one. The hollow optics, holographic optical components. Now, I don't know how they use this, but I do know how they make it. I actually saw this back in mid 70s in school. They brought in this piece of glass that had been etched by a laser with a hologram. And it was just a regular thin piece of glass. And when you look at it, you see in a house but you see it deep. It doesn't look like a 2D picture. It definitely looks 3D. You can see hundreds of feet behind the house. But what was unique is if you turn the glass, you could see both sides of the house. And if you just held it straight, you only saw the front. Now, if that isn't weird enough, somebody dropped that piece of glass in the classroom and broke it into who knows how many pieces. Would you believe that every single shard of glass had the full image on it? No matter how small it was, you could see the whole picture on there and turn it and see both sides of the house. So if we could do that all the way back in the 70s, imagine what they can do now. Another one of their products here is the Air Fusion for Smart Augmented Reality Eyewear. Pretty self-explanatory. Laser glare protection for pilots. Laser glare protective eyewear offers a unique combination of transparency and color fidelity. It actually blocks out all sorts of different types of light so they can see crisp all the time. Another product they got is GlucoWise non-evasive glucose monitoring. And then they got a nano composite ceramic battery separator. Don't know what they're all used for. Some more DD will help us here. So that is what the company is all about. So what was the relative volume around Meta Materials today? Well, she normally only does about 300,000 shares. Today, she did 4.5 million. So you're looking at about 12, 13 times her normal volume. Share structure. All right, we got nothing listed here. It is preferred stock, not common stock. I really don't know what the number is. I did not do all the DD I possibly could have. We can normally find this number in the 10K or the 10Q. They will tell you what the preferred share count is, but I don't know. My apologies. Financials, these are going to be for the company. At the end of last year, not a bad year, they did $4 million at the end of 2021, which is almost 400% more than 2020. They got to keep most of that money, $3.4 million. Quarterly, yeah, they're chugging along here, aren't they? First quarter, they did almost $3 million. Second quarter of this year, they've done over $3 million. So they are growing in revenues right now. What about their disclosures? Anything going on over here? Well, we do have a Form 4 that came out not too long ago, five days. This is when insiders buy shares. This can be a big piece of news depending on how much they buy. Welch Thomas Gordon is the buyer. He is a 10% owner of the company. And right here is where you can see what they've done. They bought common stock. We see it's green, so that means he bought it. He bought 1 million shares at 65 cents and 1.5 million at 64 cents. And then he had some exchange shares down here. Some went in, some went out. Don't understand a whole lot of that. But we see he's got 2.5 million shares he just bought five days ago. Does he know something? That's the whole thing with insider buys. When they buy, it's normally because they have information that nobody else has. So people like to see these form fours. 
What else we got over here? Uh, we've got a 42.4 B3 more than a week ago, so we're gonna let that one go by. Let's check out the news. Now, if you'll recall, I told you they did have one piece of news that came out at the end of last month. That's right here. We will take a look at that, but I want to show you this news that came out at the end of August. Meta Materials bounces off of 52-week low despite NASDAQ compliance warning. Do you remember we looked at MMAT and the price was roughly 79 cents on the NASDAQ. They have a minimum bid price requirement on the NASDAQ. You can't be under a dollar for too long. If you are, you get a warning and you're told you got to get your price up in a certain amount of time or you're going to be kicked off the NASDAQ and thrown down to the OTC. They've been told that. They've got till February 13th to get their price over a dollar. And the way they do that is any time between now and then, the price has to go over a dollar, stay over a dollar for 10 days in a row, or they will be thrown down to the OTC market. And then you had the news that came out at the end of September. Meta Materials receives 4.3 million in purchase orders. But that's only the tip of the iceberg. Check this out. This came out September 29th, Meta Materials Inc., a developer of high performance smart materials and nano composites, today announced that it has been awarded $4.3 million in purchase orders for its nano optic security business, which provides anti-counterfeiting features for currencies and government documents and authentication for brands. Meta has been executing an agreement with a maximum value of $41.5 million over a period of five years with a confidential G10 central bank customer. The new purchase orders represent a base award for continued work under the multi-year agreement. The customer may elect to increase the scope of the base award with the additional purchase orders. So they just got a nice big order. It's a continuation of a big order that they've been working on. But there's nothing fresh. There's nothing happening right now, but it is moving. So we've got to pay attention to it. And the chart looks luscious, folks. Matter of fact, let's go take a look at that now. So we've jumped on over here to Thinkorswim. This is my free trading platform. You can get it if you sign up for a free trading account with TD Ameritrade. Keep your account open and you can use this trading platform anytime you like. So we are looking at six month, four hour charts. I've got two of them pulled up here. We do have the MMTLP, which is the one we are gonna be looking at, but I wanted you to see MMAT as well. This is the common stock, this is the preferred stock, and what a difference. Both are on six month, four hour. That is a five day run right there, and that is a five day run right there. Now, MMAT is breaking the 200 day SMA on the four hour chart. Looks like she's getting on top of it right now. So I'd keep my eye on her. Something is happening right now, and the technicals are very strong on MMAT. But the gains were humongous over here with MMTLP. For the last six months, she's just been rolling like waves on the ocean until the last few days here. We had a low bubble back here of 85 cents and today we had a high of $4.60. And do I really have to say anything about those technicals, folks? Every single one of them is a tsunami. All of them are going to the moon. It looks outstanding and the volume is just incredible here. Let's focus in a little closer, 20 day, one hour view. Not a lot going on at all here. We had a low of $1.41, just barely. And then for the last one, two, three, four, five, six days, six days she's been climbing. Look at that folks, we have a trend going. Now there's been no new filings. There's been no new news. What has got her rising? Helium, hot air, I don't know and I don't care. The chart is hot, we gotta pay attention to this. Volume has been steadily increasing. All of the SMAs are churned up and looking beautiful. The price is sitting on its nine day SMA and not even coming down. And all of the technicals, look at this. For days, the RSI has been in fire. For days, the MACD has been rising like a tsunami. For days, the PPO, which is like the MACD, but it works with the percentage of the price, not the full price, it has been climbing. Everything looks outstanding. Let's look at that five day, five minute. 
Jeez, it's just beautiful no matter which perspective you look at. So now her low is $1.52. Notice the low keeps getting higher and higher. And she is steadily climbing, not with too much volatility. But I'll tell you, we had a little roll here, a bigger roll, a bounce, a jump, a big jump. So we do see more volatility building up every single day, as is the volume. As the volume comes in, the volatility gets stronger and the price continues to rise. And she has pushed up right here at the end of the day. She did break her nine day here a couple of times. She's playing with it, but she isn't really falling below the 50 day SMA. And all of our technicals, well, they were starting to push down here, but look, boink, we got a little push up right there. There's a change in direction, push up, push up, push up. Everything looks really nice here, folks. I like MMTLP, the preferred stock for MMAT. You gotta keep an eye on this. There's no catalyst or filings that I can tell you to be looking out for. All I know is that she has made a distinct change in trend and doesn't look like she wants to give it up anytime soon. Next stock we're taking a look at, we have looked at a couple times before, but it's definitely worth looking at again. This is ticker VAPR, Vapor Brands International. Now, if you'll recall, they did a reverse merger not too long ago, and they're now doing business as eSight Motors. They haven't yet changed the ticker or the name. They will here soon, but that is their new business, and they're doing it right now. And Eastside Motors, they are an innovative electric vehicle manufacturer that is developing state-of-the-art electric vehicles, utilizing the latest in technologies with the flair for some of the iconic autos of the past. Now, this is where it gets interesting. They are making brand new cars, but they're not creating new models. They're only going to be replicating classics, cars that are at least 25 years old. So you could see a 1967 Mustang, all electric, absolutely. Now don't get me wrong, they're not gonna go to the junkyard and grab a 1967 Mustang body and then build around it. No, they're replicating everything from scratch. But they're only gonna be making about 5,000 of each model, and there's a reason for that. They tell us here that Eastside's vehicles qualify under the Low Volume Vehicle Manufacturing Act of 2015. Under the act, car manufacturers that meet the criteria are exempt from certifying or complying with all of the safety standards required of traditional auto manufacturers. Now this was originally put in place for kit cars, but this company likes to tell you over and over again, we do not make kit cars. Boy, they don't like that term at all. What they do is they replicate, they duplicate. They are brand new cars, they're just not new models. So they're only gonna be making about 5,000 of each car. They better make a lot of models if they're gonna make a lot of money because you can't make a ton of money selling just 5,000 cars. Now, the company did have big news today. I mean, it was big news. I honestly expected this stock to move a lot further than it did. She finished the day at just about three and a half cents with a little over 14% gains. She is on the pink tier. She's current. She's got a verified profile and a transfer agent verified as well. I tell you to look for those green ticks on every stock you're going to invest in. Now, if you're day trading, not that important. But if you're investing for a long hold, by golly, make sure you see these here. That's important information you want validated. And they are currently a shell company. They're building their business up. They're getting things in place, but they're not making any money yet. So what was the relative volume around that big news today? Not bad. She went from about 600,000 shares to 7.1 million. That's a nice jump there. Share structure. Oh goodness, I didn't check out the float. I'll look up the float and I will throw it up there. If I can't find it, I'll put three question marks. Our outstanding shares is 342 million. Financials. Well, we should see a bunch of zeros here. They said they're a shell company and ooh, ooh, they got some money. Where'd that come from? <laughs> they got $42,000 here. Remember those three zeros up here we got to put behind all of these numbers. Cost them $13,000 to make $42,000. They got to keep $29,000. I wonder where that money came from. Disclosures. I like to look for 8Ks over here. Something current. Oh, goodness. We haven't got anything since 2006. And, of course, all of their financials are current because they're current. Let's go check out that news. 
Now the company has a lot of good news here. Let's just pick it up right here. September 29th, Eastside Motors registers their all wheel drive electric vehicle truck SUV with NHTSA to be legally driven on public roads. And then October 4th, they came out with another vehicle Eastside confirms new flagship electric vehicle, the 222 Hypercar, and it's been registered as well. Now, none of their cars are on the road in the real world, but they do have them on the road in the virtual world. Here on uh, October 6th, Eastside Motors hosts virtual racing competition at SEMA, featuring its own vehicles in Premier Celebrity Road Booth. Then again, they tell us real time to showcase virtual reality racing experience at SEMA, showcasing Eastside Motor vehicles. So they're not on the road here, but they are on the road there. Then we have the big news, the news that came out today, and it was posted twice. Performance enhanced Tesla motors and batteries to power the Eastside vehicles along with a 24 month, 50,000 mile warranty. Let's take a look at this news. They tell us here that Vapor Brands International, doing business as Eastside Motors, announces that their vehicles will be powered by motors and batteries manufactured by Tesla, upgraded by Eastside, and offer a 24 month, 50,000 mile warranty. That's juicy. Stock motors and batteries manufactured by Tesla will be purchased and then modified for enhanced performance by Eastside Motors to increase horsepower, improve cooling, and adapt to Eastside's proprietary chassis. Using modified Tesla motors and batteries further reduces our engineering requirements, dramatically increases our performance capabilities, and due to sheer economics of scale, reduces the cost of manufacturing that we can pass on to our customers. We also believe that the customer confidence will be increased over using less proven platforms. Eastside has previously been developing its affordable sports car, codenamed the Eastsight EV GT. God, how many cars is that already? To utilize the Ford Performance Illuminator motor, which produced 281 horsepower, but integration issues, cost, and enhanced performance capabilities led to switching to the Tesla motors and batteries. And they've got some more information here that you can jump into. But that's the big news. Now this company is moving forward with a lot of new designs. Gene Langmeister, who has created some of the movie set cars, a Batmobile and some other vehicles. This is a man that is working with this company. So I have big aspirations for what they're going to do. I'm still not sure how they're going to make all their money. When you're selling only 5,000 cars to meet the low volume criteria, you're going to have to charge a lot of money for those cars. They don't make it sound like they're going to be expensive cars, not very, very expensive cars. So they're going to have to probably come up with I don't know, something else, maybe selling overseas, I'm not quite sure. But I like what the company's doing, I just don't have all my questions answered yet. Maybe I'll jump into one of their shareholder meetings if they ever have one. Let's go take a look at that chart. This is VAPR, six month, four hour chart. And as I said, we have been here before. We looked at this back on July 15th. Now this did run for a couple of days. I went and looked at the news to see why it ran. They did have news out, but it was right before this and right after this, so I'm not real sure what had it running. Most of the news at that time was about them using the Ford motor in their car, but as we know now, they're not going to be able to do that. But they didn't know that back then. Now, I'm not sure that's exactly why it was running, but whatever the reason was, it was hot. It jumped here from about a penny and a half up to nine and a half cents. You're looking at almost 600% gains. She did come down though. It took quite a while, a couple of months. She's come back down to the 200, actually went under the 200 for a time being, has now come back up and is pushing away from the 200 climbing. Our volume is starting to return and all of our technicals after a very long downhill run have all changed direction and are all starting to push up now. Things are starting to look better. Let's look at that 20 day, one hour view. Not a lot going on here for most of the time. We hit a low bubble here, just over two cents. Yesterday, we jumped off of that 50-day SMA. We got above the 200-day SMA, went sideways, bounced off of our nine-day, took a big jump first thing this morning, dropped just as fast. But look, 
we didn't fall very far. I mean, yeah, we lost a lot of gains, but we're still sitting right on top of that nine day SMA. Folks, secret. You can't make any gains unless you're on top of the nine day SMA. Anytime you go under that, you are falling. So everything looks good right now. And all of the technicals show that she had a strong morning, weak afternoon, and is starting to recover. You can see that she's starting to push back up right now. Five day, five minute. All right, nothing going on back here, but yesterday she did jump off for 200, went sideways until she smacked into the 50-day SMA. Jumped right at the bell, hit that high of four cents, came down very quickly, crushed the 50-day SMA, went underneath it looking bad, but then had a turnaround and is now sitting right back on the 50-day SMA. Kind of tempting, actually. Our uh, technicals, you can see they were falling all day long, but they've had a crossover and have all started to turn back up. Things are looking promising for this. Now, I don't know if she's going to rip it up, tear it up, and go to the moon, but I do know the company's got a lot of news. They're coming out with a lot of different cars. They're now working with Tesla motors and Tesla batteries. Folks, that isn't just going to give confidence to the customers that buy the cars. That's going to give confidence to us, the investors. So I would keep my eye on Vapor. I haven't got them all figured out, but I like what I see, and I think the investors like them too. Last ticker we're taking a look at is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. It is under five bucks, so it qualifies. This is ticker LASE, Laser Photonics Core. And as you would guess, they work with lasers. They've got this special system where their lasers can remove rust, corrosion, paint, or whatever off of the surface. They got a description here. Laser Photonics is a vertically integrated manufacture and research and development center of excellence for industrial laser technologies and systems. LPC seeks to disrupt the $46 billion centuries old sand and abrasive blasting markets. Focusing on surface cleaning, rust removal, corrosion control, depainting, and other laser based industrial applications. Currently, world renowned and Fortune 1000 manufacturers in the aerospace, automotive, defensive energy, industrial, maritime, space exploration, and shipbuilding industries are using LPCs unique to industry systems. Whoa, they are out there, aren't they? So, what is. So the last ticker we're taking a look at is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. It is under five bucks, so it qualifies. This is ticker LASE, Laser Photonics. Now, Lays had some big news today. They got a federal contract with the Navy. Now, as you probably guessed, Laser Photonics works with lasers. They've got this special system that removes things off of the surface. They can remove rust, corrosion, paint, all sorts of stuff. Looking at their description, they tell us that Laser Photonics is a vertically integrated manufacturer and research and development center of excellence for industrial laser technologies and systems. LPC seeks to disrupt a $46 billion century old sand and abrasive blasting markets. Focusing on surface cleaning, rust removal, corrosion control, depainting, and other laser based industrial applications. Currently, world renowned and Fortune 1000 manufacturers in the aerospace, automotive, defense energy, industrial, maritime, space exploration, and shipbuilding industries are all using LPCs unique to industry systems. So, what was the relative volume around this company's news today? Whoa! Big, real big. My God, that's like 130 times her normal volume. She jumped from 400,000 shares to 69 million. I'm telling you, a federal contract with the Navy is a big thing. Share structure. All right, they don't tell us what the float is here, and I probably have a difficult time finding it on the NASDAQ stock. I don't know why it's tricky, but it can be. But we really do know enough here. Look at the outstanding shares, 4.8 million. The float is always less than the outstanding shares. And we don't know how many that the management and the insiders own. There have got to be shares being held by them as well. So there's going to be less than 5 million shares in the float. And it could be a lot lower than that. Any way you slice it, it's a super duper low float. 
Now this is a NASDAQ stock, so I'm expecting some money over here. Ah, not as much as I was anticipating. Uh, 2020, they did 2.1 million. At the end of last year, they doubled that at 4.1. And they're getting to keep more than half of it. Quarterly, getting any better? Well, they're doing about 1.3, 1.2 million each quarter, getting to keep about a million dollars. So yeah, they're making money, they are in business, but things could get better. And this contract can definitely help. Disclosures, we got anything current over here? Yeah, we do have an 8K, that came out five days ago. Let's see what we got over here. Uh, uh, the company, Laser Photonics, entered into a service agreement with Trod Digital Marketing Group to provide consulting services. They're going to sell them a bunch of shares for a gross proceeds of $15 million. That could be one of the reasons it's running. That is a huge amount of money. What else we got over here? Well, we got a Form 4 uh, you know this to be an inside buy or sell. They bought 98 shares. That's all they bought. It was uh, Miss Tatishina, whatever her name is, 10% owner, only bought 98 shares at $2.34. Let's go check out the news, see what's going on over there. So the company is a little light on news. They haven't got any of their own news here. The only news we get is what's imported from online, Seeking Alpha, Access Wire, things like that. And we had news come out today. Laser Photonics receives order from the US Navy for clean tech laser blasting system for submarine MRO. This is the news. This came out today, Laser Photonics Corporation, a leading global industrial developer of clean tech laser systems for laser cleaning and other material applications, today announced it received an order from the U.S. Navy for delivery this month of one of their machines, their clean tech laser blasting system, with an integrated water chiller for submarine MRO, that is maintenance, repair, and operations. We believe the U.S. Navy can benefit significantly from our clean tech laser blasting systems in their $22 billion annual fight to control corrosion across the fleet. This unit will allow the Navy to develop standard operating procedures and process for using clean tech laser blasting systems for corrosion control. Over time, we hope to expand on this initial order as the U.S. Navy realizes our technology's health, safety, and efficiency benefits. So they're bringing it in for submarines, but you know, the Navy is really big. And I don't know how many submarines they're working on. They don't give us all that sort of information here. They'll start with a couple, see how it works, and boy, who knows how far to go. And they're already spending $22 billion a year to clean their vessels. Oh my God, what a market, what a contract. Let's go see what that chart looks like. So that is a six month, four hour chart for ticker LASE, but there's not six months of chart there. Fact is, I overlooked the fact that this company just IPO'd September 30th. It's only been here 12 days. Now I'm gonna jump on down to the hour because it's just easier to see the bars on it. I'm not quite sure what price the company started its price out at, but I see she hit a high of $5.50 early in the day, and the rest of the day she did nothing but fall. How disappointing for an IPO, right? She's come all the way down here underneath her nine-day SMA. Remember I told you, you're not going to do any growing if you're under your nine-day SMA. She hit a low bubble yesterday of $1.82, is bouncing off of that low. She's got above her 50-day SMA with that jump, but has fallen and still falling after market hours, but is still above her 50-day SMA. Technicals, they kind of show exactly that. You had your climb, your fall, and there is just a whiff, just a hint of recovery showing on the chart right now. Jumping down to that five day, five minute. Really nothing going on until after market yesterday. She took a huge fall yesterday, hit that low bubble, and right at the end of the day, she took off, jumped, hit her 200 day SMA and froze. Just froze right there and she waited until the next day. And the next day opened up and what time is this? Oh my God, really? So you're talking four, about 10 minutes to five in the morning. She jumped up over that 200, 
fell, and then had a massive bounce and bounced again. When the bell went off, she took another bounce and had a lot of volatility in here. She hit her high here at $3.30 at about 12.30 in the afternoon. With more volatility in the rest of the day, she fell and fell hard. And she's come right back down to her 200, which is now a lot higher than it was down here. It's way up here now, and it looks like she's bouncing off of it right now. Looking at our technicals, wow. Look at how crazy this is. You can see the fall right there, and now it's about ready to cross over. Our ADX, kind of tough to read right now. It was showing all that downhill falling. Our MACD has had a crossover and is just about ready to cross the signal line, but our RSI is really shy on any heat. We're down at 52. I like the way she looks, though. She looks like she wants to bounce off of this. She's got a new contract. I am sure that is worth more than what we see right there. And when news comes out, I mean, the company's only been here for 12 days. There's probably a lot more to come. So Lay's had a good bounce today on the news. I don't know if that's all she should have given. It was a nice jump. We are up 44% after the fall. I'd watch for another bounce tomorrow. Honestly, I would look for another bounce tomorrow. Maybe she'll get over 330 maybe get into the $4 range. I just have this feeling. So keep your eye on LASE tomorrow and down the road. It's a new company doing big things. Now it was a slow day on the market and there wasn't a lot of huge gainers. So this was an interesting group we looked at. Each one has got something going on. Each one has contracts. Each one is making deals. They're all growing. They all have catalysts. We need to keep our eyes on these. Keeping in mind that some companies have common stock and preferred stock, you want to look at both. They both react to the same news. We saw that the preferred stock of MMTLP was much better than MMAT, the common stock. Vapor, they're not making any money yet, but boy, they're designing car after car after truck after car and now working with Tesla engines and batteries. That has got to be big news and it's going to catch up down the road, I'm sure. And then, of course, we got LACE, which has just got a contract with the federal government for the Navy. They're going to try this laser technology on a few vessels and next thing you know, who knows, the whole Navy could be using this. How big would that contract be worth? Remember, folks, you can find stuff like this every single day just by doing what I do, due diligence. You never know what you're going to find. It's kind of fun that way. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.